So we transition from that to another live look over Ferguson, Missouri. So many people, but you see a lot of, of police, the National Guardsmen down there as well. A lot of media. You see a lot of the flashing lights, too. We just saw one arrest happen just, gosh, just a few minutes ago. Of course, we're going to get the number of arrests as, as the night continues on this night, too of protests there in Ferguson, Missouri. So we're going to keep talking about this with security studies scholar Max Garrett joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Just to give you some perspective, in March you wrote your master's thesis, I want to get this title right, on 21st century strategies for policing protests, which is basically how police should respond to public protests. So yes. let's kick it off from there. You look at Ferguson, what do you see? Are they doing it right? Uh, I see some changes. Uh, I also see some missed opportunities. Um, uh, Ferguson was given a wake-up call in August mm -hmm. uh, on how they should have handled things and I think you saw last night when they were dealing with the media in a much different way that they took some of that to heart but I think they missed some opportunities to engage with their community and employ uh, draw in those community leaders to help formulate the, the strategy on on how today and yesterday should have unfolded well so you talk about missed opportunities I mean weeks ago the governor declared this state of emergency they've had these National Guardsmen prepared and planned to be there for days now President Obama took to the airwaves and said let's keep things peaceful I mean it seems like they did the things they should have been doing, but then they come out in this, you know, full riot arsenal standing there. It, it, it seems like they're, I don't want to say in sight or invite, but ready for what they think is going to happen. Sure. I, and I don't know many that, that didn't in, in some way expect some sort of violence to have occurred, unfortunately. Uh, but by uh, reaching out, starting those critical conversations with the, the community leaders, getting their feedback, getting their ideas on how they want their community to be portrayed in this protest and then working towards that. Uh, to take a line from Stephen Covey, start with the end in mind. Yeah. Look at what, a, what you would like a successful outcome to be and then get your key decision makers in, uh, and not just the police department, but the community as a whole. Uh, that means the mayor, the councilman, the alderman, uh, the, uh, your, your religious and civic leaders. Bring them in because they are, they are all the stakeholders in that community, and they are the ones that can help you uh, reach people that maybe you don't have that direct contact with. But how do you do that when this is so emotion filled? And, and it's also kind of, I don't know if target's the right word, but with the police officers, you know, they're, they're angry with the police officers who are the ones who are standing there. Sure. You know, in that riot gear, how do you do that? Well, uh, dealing specifically with police officers, you, you've got to have that training and you've got to have those conversations and you've got to be very clear uh, and you've got to prepare those officers that are on that front line that they're going to be barraged with insults, they're going to be uh, talked to in ways that, that people don't like being talked to. That's to be expected. Uh, but the, you have to have good supervision engaged with those officers to make sure that they, they understand that it's their, their job, their responsibility to protect the rights both of those that are protesting and, 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 and the, uh, the business owners there that unfortunately were looted and, and, and had their property damaged. So when people are watching this like they are here in North Texas as we're showing a live shot of somebody being arrested, the people in Ferguson, how do you think that they are reading something like that? And, and people around the world, too, because they're, they're looking at this. Yeah, Ferguson was thrust into the world stage uh, very quickly. Uh, I don't know that they had uh, a lot of experience in dealing with protest. Uh, and so it, it's, it's challenging. They're starting from a position uh, where they're already behind. And there, there's only so much realistically that you, you might imagine that they, they could do to, to prepare for this. Uh, I was a little concerned, as you mentioned, given, given the, the heads up that they had and the time frame that they had to, to prepare for this grand jury decision, that they weren't better prepared with the National Guard to deal with that. I do find that quite curious that yesterday afternoon they started saying we're going to release this decision, you know, in a few hours and then the word spread and um, Michael Brown's mother came downtown and was sitting on top of this vehicle when that decision was announced and was screaming and then you hear more people start to scream and it just becomes, again, I go, just the rage and the anger that perhaps has been building in this community for a long time and then it just boiled over last night and into tonight as well as we continue to look at a, another live picture. Sure, you, you, you've got to break your officers of the mindset that, that some might have that it's uh, police versus protester. 
uh, you've got human beings policing human other human beings mm -hmm. and, and, and keeping the, the pain and the anguish that the, the Brown family is, is dealing with uh, in your mind and, and how you communicate with them uh, is important. And, and the, the community looks at that and they, they gauge your trust or what, what trust they feel like they should have in you on how you treat them. I do want to ask you about that. And you know, you've been with the Dallas Police Department, major with the Dallas Police Department for more than 20 years, so, so you know this. But how much does the community look at it? I mean, you've got Michael Brown's mother. The family released a statement. Yes, she was emotional in front of everybody, but the family released a statement that said, keep things peaceful. This is what we want. The President of the United States is saying keep things peaceful. And it seems like people aren't listening. Sure. Regardless of your politics, I thought the President had an excellent statement saying that we don't change policy because you set a car on fire. We don't change policy or procedures because you loot a, a pizzeria or set yeah. it on fire. You change policy by getting involved and engaged and changing the electorate and having your voice heard. And it, we have to be careful not to paint all of those protesters uh, with a broad brush of saying they're all violent, they're True. all they're all transgressive is the, the scholarly word for it. But uh, unfortunately there are a, a segment of those protesters that believe the only way to change things is, is with transgressive tactics and with militancy and that's uh, that's simply unfortunate. Well you're absolutely right. I, we should add that that this is you know a, a small group of people getting it seems pretty pretty violent and then there have been people in that those protesters who have tried to stop them. So we should we should add that as well. So again, Max, we appreciate you being here with us tonight. Thank you.